tonight, Lord. Lord, baptize us in fire. Baptize us in the Hebrews 12 fire, where it says, shake everything. I'm coming to shake everything that can be shaken until only I remain, for he is an all-consuming fire. Lord, we don't want to be consumed by what the world calls fire. We don't want to be consumed by the things of this world. We want to be consumed by a holy fire we want to be consumed by a holy fire. Burn up every other lover. Burn up every other lover until only you remain. Come on, just begin to open up your mouth, Lord. Burn up every other lover. Burn up every other lover. Burn up every other lover until only you remain. Lift your hands and sing this. Your heart's desire. Come on. Living flame of love. Come baptize us. So only you remain. Till all. Till only you remain, till only you remain. Burn everything away that's not like you. Come on, ask. 
Him tonight. Burn everything that's not like You. Let it burn. Let it burn. To all. church, we make room for you to do whatever you want to do. <laughs> that was witness, as was witness Sunday morning, Lord, we just all said yes. We just all said yes. We do it again tonight, and we do it again tomorrow, if you should tarry, and then tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. We just say yes to do whatever you want to. We pray for Kansas City tonight. We pray for the families, especially the one that was the life that was lost and the people that were injured in shootings today. We pray that your hand of protection and your comforting of the Holy Spirit will, will be with all those families tonight. Pray tonight, Lord, for our youth who are um, uh, just on a field trip, just enjoying each other and uh, and fellowshipping tonight. We pray for them. We pray for Pastor Jamie tonight as he's in Columbus, Ohio, as he's ministering to World Harvest College students tomorrow, Lord, that your anointing will be upon him. World changers just like we have here at this church, world changers. We pray tonight for Dennis C. We pray for Judy Hughes. We pray, we pray, we pray for those who are watching tonight, people who are desperate to have your touch upon their lives. We need you, Lord. Thank you for those who have gathered here tonight to just to fellowship and enjoy your presence and to hear the word of the Lord and um, we just bless our family tonight we bless our church family tonight and we give you the rest of this service and we thank you for it in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and everybody said amen amen, praise God come on over everybody on this side just come over on this side and, and 
think everybody who normally sits over here has gotten used to the fact that they have to get up and move over here. And so um, I think everybody's kind of getting it. <laughs> Praise God. Brother Charles uh, came over this afternoon and we had an opportunity to talk to him. And I, he, he, um, he and um, his company, Pure Clean, is helping us with our um, our stage over here and uh, I told Brother Charles I said Brother Charles we had an explosive baptism <laughs> Sunday he said I saw it I saw it on Facebook and he says it really looks like something exploded <laughs> so we're, um, we're hoping that we're going to be able to uh, uh, to uh, just to that this that God would just heal the stage. <laughs> it, it looks like something from the cartoons have been here, and they've got their stuff set up. Uh, what are those things that are yellow and blue? Minions. Look like the minions have come and left their stuff here. Um, but it's very serious. It's very serious over here with all the stuff that they're doing. And, uh, and praise God for, um, for that beautiful family. We love them so much. And we love you. Pastor Jamie, I sent him off today. He is in Columbus, Ohio. He's going to be speaking in the morning to the World Harvest student body. And uh, bringing the word there in the morning. And, uh, and he said... Y'all just make sure y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me too. <laughs> Praise God. So if you're watching tonight, babe, um, I don't know if you're in yet, but if, we're, if you're watching, I want you to know we're going to be praying for you in the morning about 10 o'clock uh, in Columbus and believing for great and mighty uh, impartation to all those students that are there. And so we were so elated with Sunday morning, um, I tell you, it was really a watermark in in my life. I don't know what it was like in your life, but it was really a watermark in my life. How many have seen the my video uh, that I did? Uh, it's, it is it is really exploded. I, I haven't seen it the last, but the last time I saw it was there fifteen thousand views. But um, people. People get on there, I guess, to hear me scream and sweat and do all that. But um, I really had a, a, a testimony about what really, really happened to me personally Sunday morning. And the act, one act of obedience. Everybody say one act of obedience. One act of obedience can change everything. And <clears throat> so we'll get into that in just a little bit. But... I'm curious if there's somebody here tonight who are, you're visiting for the first time. If that, if you are, just lift your, your hand. We'd love to see who you are and know who you are. We may be all family here tonight, and if we are, praise God for that. Thank God. Uh, it's nothing like family. It's nothing like the family of God. Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, we're going to go ahead and receive God's tithe and your offering right now. And... Um, and Pastor Heather, my checkbook is in my book, my purse right there, and thank you so much. You've done that so many times. If you need an envelope, lift your hands. Uh, Miss Melissa and Jason are doing such an amazing job. And um, we're going to get that taken care of. Uh, praise God. Pastor Judy, that is such, that joke is just not funny anymore. Lift your hand. Is 
that mean everybody else likes that joke? <laughs> I'm just kidding. For those of you who are watching, please, I'm just kidding. Oh, my goodness. Please let me, let me correct that. Please don't be texting me and saying, why do you say that about the market beats? Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Praise God. I got my red mic. And purple is kind of like a Valentine. It's, it's, a, it's a purple, pink. It's a soft color. And so my husband took me to dinner last night. Because bless God, he weren't leaving town till I got my dinner. <laughs> they did a survey. Somebody did a survey. And I, I was listening to my radio and somebody did a survey about Valentine's and they said really uh, a wife all she wants is a good meal a sweet card and dessert that's all that she really really wants and I thought that's probably very very true and I don't know where he gets his cards from because when he gives me my ca my cards they are the most amazing beautiful words there's lots of words and he always has to read it to me and then I say I, he, I say baby I don't know where you get your cards he says I'm not telling you he says but I get my cards so I don't have to say anything so I don't have to write anything inside I just say it uh, in my cards so so we had dinner last night and then we had uh, breakfast this morning and then he was off to the races Praise God. And me and Remy, I've been stuck with Remy all day long. All day long, I've been stuck with Remy. Anybody pray for me when it comes to me and Remy? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. Praise God. Well, let's stand to our feet and let's make these declarations. Declare these things out loud. Who's going to pray? Why don't you pray? Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, bless the works of my hands. Show yourself strong on my behalf and thank you in advance for 100% liberation from everything that has ever had us bound. We expect unexpected income now. We have supernatural protection from heaven and we believe that all our debts are removed. We believe the Lord today for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, rebates and returns checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, expenses decrease, blessings increase. We are believing you for heaven open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, divine manifestations, anointing, giftings and callings, positions and promotions, provision and resources to go to the nations, I remind principalities, powers, and familiar spirits that they have no right to touch my life in any way, for I am in covenant with God and hidden in the secret place of the Most High. I seal these declarations in the name of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or imagine according to the power that works in me. Amen for your gift tonight, your, your God's tithe and your offering. Thank you for continuing to be a blessing to our church and, and to be a blessing in walking in obedience, in obedience to God. So thank you for that. What a, um, what a great time we had on Sunday. I want to say personally to everybody who was helping out Uh, Danny and Cindy and uh, that's good. Danny and Cindy and uh, I think the whole church was involved. It was glorious. It was glorious. Uh, so many testimonies came forth. There was one person who was watching online that that got out of her house and came over and said, "I can't stand it anymore. I've got to come over here and I want to get in that water. There's something in that water." And so they left their house and came into the service and got baptized. Praise God. <laughs> Isn't that great? Give God a praise right there for that. That was so great. 
And um, people, you know, I, I've, there's probably been three times in my life where I've actually seen something of that magnitude that happened the way it happened. 31 people. Uh, for, we can just stop right there at 31 people being baptized uh, on a Sunday morning. I mean, it was just phenomenal that 31 people said yes. And Joe, Joe and, uh, and Pam uh, did the teaching on Sunday morning, and then they had to skedaddle. And y'all missed, y'all missed it. Y'all, y'all, y'all put, put the word in, into, inside of them, and uh, the rest is history. But um, they came on, on at 9 o'clock that Sunday morning, and, uh, and Pastor Joe and, and, um, uh, and Pam uh, and I think Danny and Cindy uh, helped with just explaining. There's, there's Danny and Cindy uh, helped in explaining what baptism is and, and what, it, what it means. And so, and then they, when, they, when they all came together, there was two people that didn't show up. Is that right? There were two people. So like 33 people signed up and 31 showed up. How awesome is that? That, that in itself is just awesome. And there were several visitors here that came. You know, you, you, you never know who's going to be in the house. People who are desperate, who know what happens here at Dwelling Place Church, who know that we're people going after God. And, uh, and I, I have been in lots of places where they have said, I'm coming to your church because I know something happens in that house. And I've got to get to that house. And so the power of the Holy Spirit resides here, and people know it. And so we had some visitors that, that came Sunday morning and was in a dire, dire need that spoke with Pastor. And the Holy Spirit just did such an incredible work in their lives. And they were, uh, they were well, actually, one of them was a part of the baptism. <laughs> and... Uh, and and texted pastor on Monday talking about what God did through that baptism. And, uh, and then I just opened it up. I just said, as I always do, you know, pastor or, or pastor will say it. If anybody, you know, is here and you just want to come and be baptized. And, and then the floodgates open. The whole floodgates open. And so it, it was just like the glory of God just kept going higher and higher and 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 it was just like Troy, you and April, April, y'all, y'all were, y'all, y'all were watching, and um, we can take you back there in the shower if y'all want to, but um, <laughs> um, but you know the glory started moving and the power of God started moving, and I, I was sharing with uh, Facebook uh, people how I went to get this the, my knee done and. Uh, if you're over 65, they require an EKG. And so uh, I went in on the day of the surgery, and the doctor comes in and said, Miss Tuttle, do you, do you realize that you failed your EKG? And I said, no, sir, I didn't. I didn't realize that. Nobody called me. He said, yeah, and he began to uh, tell me uh, what the problem was uh, with one of the branches from my heart. Uh, that there is there was a clogged artery, and uh, he says if you want to continue on with the surgery, we believe that you'll be fine through the surgery. But as soon as the surgery is over with, we we recommend you going to your your doctor and then a cardiologist is what we recommend. Uh, this needs to be taken care of immediately. And so the pastor and I didn't say much about it, and so um, you know I, I had this knee uh, scope that I had and I'm hopping along Cassidy and I you know I can't get on a treadmill so uh, we just trusted the Lord and so we, we went to uh, get a nuclear stress test done we went through that and if you've ever had a nuclear stress test <laughs> it is definitely nuclear okay it is definitely nuclear where they inject this medicine in and then you go through all these things you're going to you're gonna you're gonna be short breath. Your breath's gonna get short. And uh, how many of you ever had nuclear stress test? Oh my goodness! And so I went through all of that, and, and then the lady told me I need you to turn over because I I'm seeing something and lay on your tummy and 
And so, you know, and here comes the enemy, boom, 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 boom. And I just, you know, I stayed in faith and I said, I'm just going to trust God. I'm going to believe God. So I had an appointment this, this yesterday to, to see my doctor who was going to have the results. So Sunday morning, I'm standing on this stage just as innocent as I could be. Just as innocent and sweet as I could be. How many of you were as innocent and sweet as you can be sitting in your chairs? Let me see your hand. Didn't have a care in the world. You were just enjoying seeing all these people get baptized and just obliterated in water, you know, and coming up and the power of God hitting people. And so as I'm standing there, God reminded me of Naaman. He said, do you remember Naaman, how I gave him an instruction from Elijah to go dip in the Jordan? And I, and I said, yes, Lord. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, what does that have to do with me? He says, I need you to go over there and dip in the Jordan. And I thought, ho, 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 that ain't the Jordan. I think that was worse than the Jordan. And if you've ever seen the Jordan or been in the Jordan, you know the Jordan River is, is, is not, it's not the cleanest. It's, it's, it's very muddy and it is cold. Okay? Every song you've ever heard about the, the cold Jordan, it's cold. It's cold and it's muddy. Okay? Cold and muddy. And Naaman told, he, he told uh, his servant... Out of all the all of the, the rivers that I could go to, why did he tell me? I thought he was going to come out and, and just wave his hand or touch me. And, and, and the servant said, uh, Master, if he would have asked you to do something great, wouldn't you have done it? And he said, but he's asked you to do something so simple. And then here comes the enemy with a thousand reasons why I cannot go into that water. First of all, there's been 411 people that's already been in it. Come on, somebody, don't let me stand up here by myself. Number two, I don't have, a sec I don't have any clothes, okay? I don't have any, uh, another, another set of clothes. And here's all these things, the reasons why I cannot go, I cannot be baptized. Your hair, your face, your, your makeup, everything. And people are going to think that is so silly. They're going to think you're in the flesh. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to. And then immediately I thought, <laughs> This is not God. This is the devil. And I am sure enough getting in that water. Because I know the voice of the good shepherd. And the voice of a stranger I will not follow. God ain't going to tell you. Now, if I listen, baby, listen, daughter. If you get in that water over there, you're going to, he ain't going to say that. He's going to say, and when you get in there, make sure they dip you seven times. So I took my, I took my jacket off. And I got my shoes and socks off. I took, my, I took off my, my earrings. I took off my watch. And, and I am waiting my turn. And when I went down in that water, and when I came up, I looked at my husband and I said, do it again. And he did it again. And I don't know how many, I don't really know, remember how many times he did me, but um, I got it good. And then the glory of God that came on me. How many of you felt such glory? It was such glory. And the, when we got home that night, when everybody got home, everybody was saying, Mom, did you see this? Did you see that? I'm like, no, I didn't see them. You, you, you mean to tell me that they'd gotten, you, you mean to tell me? Yeah, Mom, they went in. Did you see when, did you see when Wendy Tao went in with her, all of her beautiful red dress? I'm like, no, you mean to tell me? And um, the glory of God was so strong. So yesterday... Y'all, yesterday when I walked in that, in that uh, daughter's office, um, he pulled out. He said, Miss Tuttle, I know you're anxious to know probably what the results of, of that, uh, that test was. And what, where are we going from here on out? I said, yes, sir, I am. He says, well, let's just look at it together. And he started to, and you have to know my doctor. My doctor is so, <laughs> oh, he is so down to the nth degree. I mean, everything about him, his collar is starched. Everything about him is it. I mean, it's just that about him. He's going to cover every de detail and every diameter. He's going to cover it. And I love him about that. And he loves Jesus. And he said, well, look at this. They're saying this is normal. He's strolling down, you know, clicking. Oh, wow. 
That's, that's, that's normal. That, well, they say there's no, no problem there. there. There's no problem there. I'm telling you what they said before. You'll be on medication the rest of your life. Or what we can do is we can have a surgery and we can get rid of it immediately. I'm telling you what they said before. And now I'm telling you what he told me yesterday. And I'm telling you it happened right up here on this stage when I said yes. One act of obedience said, I'm going in that water. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how dirty it is. I'm going in that water, and I'm coming up, and I'm going to get a good report on Tuesday. And the devil is still a lie. And, and so I was talking to our mentees last night, and I told our mentees, my, 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 uh, my book is, my Bible is right there, and I told my mentees, I told them, Let's, I want you to look at, uh, go to Luke chapter 1, verse 37, and if you can find it in the Passion Translation, Miss Sam, is Sam back there? Sam, there's Sam, oh, what beautiful face. Luke chapter 1, verse 37, I want you to look. At Luke chapter 1, <laughs> verse 37. Because this is what God reminded me of as I was preparing to do a Zoom call last night with, with all the mentees. He took me to, to chapter 1 of Luke, verse 37. And you know it's all about the angels speaking to, to Mary. And it says <clears throat> in verse 30. And in verse 30, uh, let's just say 36. What's more, your aged aunt, and she's talking, he's talking about Elizabeth now, <clears throat> has also become pregnant with a son. The barren one, that's in quotes, the barren one is now in her sixth month. That's what they would call, were calling Elizabeth, the barren one. The, the, now, the barren one is now in her sixth month. And here's verse 37. Not one promise from God is empty of power. For nothing is impossible with God. Not one promise, here's the word, from God is empty of power. For nothing is impossible with God. And so... I told the girls last night, I said, I want you to write out something. I'm gonna, we're going to write this out together. And I wrote out, prayer works. And I said, don't quit. I should say, don't quit praying, Judy. But I said, don't quit, Judy. Keep praying. So I want you to do that right now. I want you to get you a piece of paper. I want you to write it down. If you've got your phone, uh, take that font and make it big. And I want you to put... Prayer works. Don't quit. Put your name beside it. Keep praying. Why? Because God hears and God answers prayer. It doesn't matter how long you've been praying about it. It doesn't matter how, how desperate it looks. It doesn't matter how dire it looks. Prayer works. Say it. Prayer works. God hears. And here's the other thing. God answers prayer. You just can't quit praying. You can't quit praying. And God remind me of Simeon and Anna. How Simeon and Anna were in the temple and, and had prayed for years upon years upon decades upon decades. And the moment, the moment that they saw the Messiah... There was joy because they knew the long-awaited Messiah. Here's what we've been praying for, and now he is here. He is here. That is him. And Simeon said, now, Lord, let this your servant die in peace because my eyes have seen the child, the promised child. And so all you got to do is you got to keep pushing. Somebody said you got to pray until. 
You got to pray, and you can't quit praying. You got to pray again. And then when you pray again, guess what you got to do? You got to pray again. And then you got to keep praying, and then you got to keep praying. I remember my mom going into that closet and thinking, how long is she going to stay in that closet? And I remember how she would go in that closet feeling, looking like she was so down and out because of the things that she was praying about. And she went in that closet with her shoulders down. You've heard me tell this many times. And when she came out of the closet, she had the victory. I mean, she was whooping and whoo and hallelujah and dancing. And I thought to myself, there ain't but one thing that's going to, that in my mind, the logic in my mind was, I know there's not a phone on the wall with those long cords in a closet. So I know she hadn't talked to somebody. She hadn't talked to anybody that said, you're not going to believe what happened, Gaynell. Sister Gaynell, you're not going to believe what happened. Blah, 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 to do to that or do to that. I, I knew that wasn't the answer. You know what happened when she went in that closet? She prayed through. She prayed through, and she knew that she knew that she knew that something had changed, something had happened. God had lifted that burden, and she took a hold of her promise and faith and say, I can't see it because faith is the substance of things not seen, and it is the convincing proof of things that you cannot feel or touch or see. She knew that she knew it was already done. Because this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our, even our, even our, even our. This is the victory that overcometh the world. You can't, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe. You must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. It's one thing to believe that he is. It's another thing to believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently good students good students those who diligently seek after him not a casual acquaintance not a foxhole prayer pray prayer warrior you know what a foxhole prayer warrior is when you get in trouble oh god i know i haven't talked to you in three months seven three years but i need you okay now god's going to hear he's going to hear he always hears but let me tell you something. I don't want to be in that position when I need God. I want to have such communion with him that when he talks with me and he walks with me and he tells me I am his own in that garden, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. <laughs> that means early in the morning. He comes and he talks and sweet nothings in my ear. And I listen. And then I, I whisper sweet nothings in his ear. And the love and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. The love of God, it can't match. You can't match the love of God with a husband. You're not going to find that in a husband. You're not going to find that in a boyfriend. You're not going to find that in a car. You're not going to find that in a, in a wife. You're not going to find that in your bank account. You're not going to find that in drugs or alcohol. You're not going to find that in being friends and being the big person. No, you're going to only find that sweet communion at that place where you meet him and he whispers in your ear and he's talking in your ear. And you just, you're just smiling and the joy is in your heart. And then you, you, and you talk back to him and, and Holy Spirit is there. And Holy Spirit is just having such a great conversation, just sitting and watching, watching you have such a conversation with Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is always lifting up Jesus. Holy Spirit is always lifting up Jesus. It's like, you know, like my mom. And my mom used to, you know, uh, with, with my sisters, my mom and my sisters used to get together and they talk. And me and my sisters used to like this. We were just listening every little word. We were just listening because we were, we were in, and they, and they would laugh. We would just laugh. We didn't know what we were laughing about. We were just laughing because they were laughing. And then there would come times when they say, okay, y'all need to go outside. We meant, well, then we knew something's going down. Something's going down. And then we put our ears down in the, on the floor. But there's a communion, communion with him that takes place that nothing can take the place 
And that's what he wants from us. And I want you to put this somewhere. Prayer works. I want you to be reminded of it over and over and over again that God hears and God answers prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go to our study for tonight, and let me see how far I can get. I know we've already uh, done some, some of the, uh, the things that we want to talk about, six of the things that we talk about in following the Lord, and um, some misconceptions, if you will, because we, 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 uh, we get ourselves in church and community, and, and, and then we believe that God is moving in, in, in all of us, and God is doing something in all of us, and we're at a place where we believe that God is speaking. God is moving, and God is speaking. And so we talked about how uh, here's what we need to do in this next season because God is growing us in this year of, of the door. And um, I want you to look at 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter Two, First Peter chapter two, Sam. First Peter chapter two, verse two. If you'll give me that very quickly, as soon as you can, ma'am. Uh, here's what we're going to do in this brand new season that that we're looking at. At First uh, Peter chapter two, beginning at verse two. Let's go to verse uh, one, beginning at verse one, if you will. So abandon every form of evil, deceit, hypocrisy, feelings of jealousy and slander. In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you must intensely crave, say crave, crave the pure spiritual milk of God's word. For this milk, it's in quotes, will cause you to do what? Grow how? Say it. How will you, how will you grow? Say it loud. Fully nourished and what else? Strong for what? Strong for life. And so that's what God is doing to us as a church. I don't know if you've ever, we talked about last time, been in a room full of babies and infants crying and, and crawling and hollering for toys and toddlers pushing and whining to get their way. It's, it's, it's like that with spiritual babies. It's, you know, when they get together, there's something, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that God never intended for us to stay as babies. So, so let's look at verse, 1 Peter again. In the same way that nursing infants cry for milk, you, say me, we must, what is that next word? We must what? Intensely, say intensely, and you to grow into maturity, fully nourished, and strong for life. Moving from the milk of the word to the meat of the word until we grow up into mature sons and daughters because God intends for us to grow. And the only way you're going to grow is to feed on the word. So I talked about last time we must get ourselves in church and community somewhere. Somebody say somewhere. Somewhere find you a place to be in church and in community and stay there. All right? Stay there. So I'm talking to the choir tonight because you're here. Turn the person beside you and say, I'm here. She ain't talking about me. Okay. <laughs> so you, 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 you find a church and, you, and community somewhere. And number two, while you are there, here it is, have church. Just go on ahead and have church. Don't stand around waiting for church to happen. You are the church. The church is not these pews. The church is not this carpet. The church is not this building. You are the church. Fitly joined together. Upon this rock, I will build a church. Who's the church? Say, I am the church. I am the church. I am the church. We are the church. So while you're there, be the church. Be the church. When it's time to worship and praise, do that. When it's time to give, give. When the Holy Spirit speaks through your pastor and he gives an invitation, you just say, Lord, I want more of you. God, I want more of you. Lord, I want more of you. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to that altar because I want more of God. And then number three, we have to get ourselves in a church and community. And then while we're there, have church. And then number three, be the church. And just can we just be the church when we leave? Can we just be the church 
when we leave? Can we be the Christians when we leave? Okay? So I'm just, I'm just going over, I'm just, I'm just going over some uh, reviews. So here's some of the most popular sayings in this culture. And things that we mistake that Jesus said. Here's the first one. Number one, follow your heart. Jesus never said, follow your heart. Say that. Jesus never said, follow your heart. Jesus never said that. Let me tell you something about your heart. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, your heart is desperately wicked. Look at this. In all of its ways. In all of its ways. The Amplified says the heart is deceitful above all things and it is extremely wicked. Who can understand it fully and know its secret motives except God, right? In Proverbs 4.23, above all else, above all else, guard your heart, guard your heart, guard it. For everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from your heart. So Matthew 15, 19 says, for out of the heart, here it comes, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. Which reminds me of Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, which talks about the seven things that God hates. And we talked about that last time. Here's what I know. Jesus came to set us free and to give the new covenant so that our sins could be forgiven and we as sinners could be born again. That's why Jesus came, to bring us into the family of God. Because on our own, we cannot transform our lives. Our hearts, by our own effort, cannot be transformed. It is an everyday thing, giving your heart to God every single day. Saying, this day, Lord, my heart belongs to you. Everything, I say yes today to everything you want to do in my heart today. In my life today, I say yes. So, the only solution is for God, is for God to make our hearts new, clean, and fresh. Wash clean from sin. Turn our heart to him every day. Because Psalm 73, 26 says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart. God is the strength of my heart. Say that. God is the strength of my heart. Say it again. God is the strength of my heart. He guards my heart, and so he's looking for us to look to him to help us guard our hearts. He is the strength of our hearts and our portion forever. David said in Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart. So, you can't follow your heart. You have to take up your cross and follow Jesus. Here's another one. Here's another one. They say that Jesus says this. Live your truth. Jesus never said, live your truth. Say that. Jesus never said, live your truth. You just live your truth. You know, I'm going to live my truth. Because my truth may be different than your truth. And your truth may be different than my truth. No, this is the truth. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Because the Bible says to examine the word of God, because in it you think, the Bible says, that you have eternal salvation. Look it up. Examine your heart, because you think you have eternal life, because you haven't looked into the word and divided the word, and, and divided the word in every, in every area of your life. So... People say, I'm just going to live my truth. You live your truth. That's a lie. Are you kidding me? You have no truth. Your truth is bound up in the word of, of God. Your truth is in your relationship with Jesus, your Savior, your Redeemer, who delivered you out of hell's fire. Your truth is his truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You ain't even, you don't even, even have your own life. Your life doesn't even belong to you. Jesus said, whosoever wants to be my disciple, it is an invitation. Whosoever wants to be my disciple, whosoever, it's an invitation. He says, you must deny yourself. You must deny your truth. You must deny what you want. Pick up your cross and follow me. Right. 
Amen. Number three, here's what people say that Jesus says. Do what you think is best. Jesus never said, do what you think is best. Are you kidding me? Jesus said, Jesus never said, you do what you think is best. And Jesus will go, okay, you just go on, just go on ahead. You just go on ahead. No, he said, seek ye this kingdom of God and his, and then all of these would be what? It would be added unto you. You got to seek first the kingdom. And this is the reason why. He says, I am God, and beside me there is no other, and I will not tolerate another idol in your life. Thou shalt have no other God before me. And you're saying, you're talking about, you're talking about that big Buddha thing that got the big belly. You can go to TJ Maxx and find them. I'm talking about anything that comes between you and your relationship with God. I don't care who it is, what it looks like, and what kind of statue it is. It may be your job, it may be your friends, it may be your, it may be your, your, your a boat, it may, be, it may be your husband, your wife, your children, whatever it is. God says, let me tell you, I'm not tolerating that. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I am jealous. I want all of you. Because you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. You do what I say. But it's an invitation. Whosoever. Whosoever. Will come after me. You're going to come after you. Whoever's going to go come with me. Let him deny himself. Take up his cross. And follow me. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. I love Presbyterians. People, people, people say, I gotta look out for my own good. Jesus never said that. Jesus said, if you want to live, then you got to die. If you want to go up, then you got to come down. If you want to be the greatest, you got to be the servant. If you, don't, if you don't hate, here's another one. He said, if you don't hate your mama, your father, your sister, your brother, your car, your dog, your children, your land, and your houses, you won't even see the kingdom of God. It don't get any clearer than that. What does he mean by that? He is saying, I was saying that. He's saying, your loyalty, I demand all your loyalty. Are you kidding me? Do you know what I did? God became flesh and dwelt among us. And you're going to put some, me and somebody else between me and you, and you know what they did to my son to bring us into communion with each other? Really? No, I don't. I never knew you. Hey, didn't we do this and didn't we do? I never knew you. I never knew you. I know this girl. I know her inside and outside. Cause she's a lot like her her mama. I know her. Okay, she can never deny me. And and and, and the other one's just about as bad. All right? As they call it, mini Judy. And it is, buddy. Whoa! We have to stay sanctified all the time, me and her. Because it's like, <laughs> Juanita Bonham said to me one time, you can't, you can't fuss at, at, at that child because you're fussing at yourself. <laughs> I said, yes, I can. But, but, you know, Kaylee, I know Kaylee. I know her inside and out as much as, as a mother can. And that's the way God wants. He wants to know us. That's the reason why he said, I never, I never, I never knew you. I didn't know you. We, I, don't, I don't remember any talks we had. You know all those talks we have? Huh. You ever had any talks with your sons and daughters? You ever had any talks with your friends and your sisters and your brothers? And you know them. You know what's coming. If you, if you say one thing, it's going to... It's a, a, it's a cracker, firecracker, boom. It's going to... You can hit a button, and the whole world's going to blow up. How many know what I'm talking about up in here? You hit one button, the whole world could possibly blow up if you say something. Push. I tell you, don't hit the button. 
leave the buttons alone. Matter of fact, get rid of the buttons. Matter of fact, destroy the buttons. Do what you think is best. No. The best thing you can do is to de deny yourself. He says, if you don't humble yourself like a child, you can't even get to where I am. If you don't humble yourself as a child, if you don't even humble yourself as a child, have you been around a child lately? Been around a child lately? We used to talk Erica and I talk Erica and, and, and something that was, she, she, she hadn't done this in a long time. But her daddy would say, Erica, let's see how fast you can go get me a Diet Coke out of the refrigerator. Because she prided herself in running so fast. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, Dad. And you hit that button. And she gets, and you run. And go get him a Diet Coke downstairs. She was <laughs> clueless. And, and kids, are, kids are like that. They're so open. They'll just do. They'll just believe. They'll believe anything because they, they respect their mother and their father. Wouldn't it great if we'd get back to respecting our daddy God? Understanding who he is. He's holy. He's unapproachable. He's unapproachable. He lives in a, he lives in a place that you can't. You can't he, he, he's beyond understanding. I mean, he, he lives in your heart, and he can hold you, and he can do all that, but he's still holy. And we treat him like he's a, hey, give me some of that, give me some give me that, son, buddy. Give me, hey, buddy, here, give, me, give, me a, give me a bump fist. He ain't that. We come into his presence, and it's a holy thing. We've lost it. We've got to get it back. Yeah, we've got to get that back. The best thing you can do is to deny yourself. The best thing you can do is love your enemies. The best thing you can do is pick up that cross, Jesus said, and follow me. And here's number four. I just love number four. Do, do they say, Jesus said, do what makes you happy. Jesus, they say, Jesus said, do what makes you happy. Find it in the Bible. And let's talk about it right now. Where Jesus ever said, just be happy. When you become a Christian, you're going to be happy. <laughs> All the time. No. Happiness, write it down. Happiness depends on your circumstances. If your circumstances are good, you are happy. If you got money in the bank. If your husband got you some flowers, if you got some candy, if, 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 if your bills are paid, you are happy. What if you can't rub two pennies together? Come on. Come on. That's when the joy of the Lord kicks in because you're not depending on, on, on earthly things. You're depending on my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. You can't be, you can't be happy and, 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 and joyful at the same time. You know what I mean. We can be happy, but it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And people are waiting for all their cares to go away to be happy. And they forget about, they forget about the fruit. Hey, praise God, I'm, I'm looking for the gifts. Praise God, I want, to, I want the gift of prophecy. I want the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And I want the gift of healing and miracles and just give me the gifts of the spirit I want to be so spiritual that I have all the gifts and there's some of the meanest Christians you've ever met in your life mean they don't, they don't, they don't give a fifth about love the fruit they don't bear fruit but they want the gifts you can talk in tongues to the rooster crows next morning. And all it is is just you just blah, 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 blah. And I'm, I'm not making fun. I'm just saying. Anybody, the devil talks in tongues. He does. People, people forget about the love, the love part, the joy, 
the peace, the long suffering. Here it is, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. I better say something, I'll stay here 30 minutes. That person ticked me off. I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to get even. Kindness. All right, let's move on. I got to go. Jesus didn't come to make you happy. You don't believe me? Ask John the Baptist. Okay, here's another one. Ask, ask Esther. Let's ask the Hall of Famers in Hebrews 11. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11. I think I got time. Hebrews chapter 11. What happened to the Hebrews 11 people? We love to talk about the Hall of Fame. Right? Oh, I just love, I just love Hebrews chapter 11. Oh, that's such a powerful, powerful faith is a confidence for by faith we understand that the the entire universe was formed at God's command. And by faith, Abel brought a more acceptable. By faith, Enoch was taken up to heaven. Woo! Right? By faith, Noah built a large boat. By faith, Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home. It was by faith that Sarah was able to have a child. All these people died still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they, had long can, if they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly home. That is why God is not ashamed to call, to call their God, for he has prepared for them a city. It was by faith. It was by faith that Moses, and it was by faith that, that, that the children of Israel marched around Jericho. And then we come to Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 36, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 36, we heard. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 36. Let's look at how happy, let's look at how happy the saints of God were. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Here's something. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. Others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute, destitute, and oppressed and mistreated. And look what the writer of Hebrews says. They were too good for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes on these ground, holes in the ground. All these poor people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them, how many of them? None of them received all that God had promised. Why? Verse, verse, 30, verse 40 says what? Because God had something better in mind for them. Because God had something better in mind for them. The world was not worthy. Listen, if you want to be happy, join the circus. Write it down. If I want to be happy, I'm going to join. Well, I don't know what to tell you because Barnum and Bailey is not in, no longer in. They're not no, no longer right. Circus. Ask the people of God in the 1040 window how happy they are. How joyful they are. The people who are going through persecution, the persecuted church. The underground church who are being tortured right now for the sake of what we are enjoying today.
whisper. A whisper in church. And they say, now Greg, is our God saying to me, now Greg, is our... I've been to those countries. I've been to those countries where you've got 45 minutes. you got a window of 45 minutes. And you got to be out in an hour and 15 minutes. I'm talking about guitars and chords going out for the next group of people coming in. Out. And there's people in the room in Dubai that are, that are, that are watching you to see if you're going to say anything about go their government. See, myself. So everything. And when they come in, when they come in, they enter his gates with Thanksgiving in the court. And the door. And their voices are loud. And they're happy. They're so happy and joyous to be in church. That's when they're really happy. To be with other believers. Honor to serve and to suffer for the sake of Christ. Here's, here's, this is probably the last one. We deserve happiness. Jesus said, Jesus said we deserve happiness. I deserve to be happy. We deserve hell. We deserve hell. Are you serious? Look at Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Well, let me just say this. He was bru he was wounded for our iniquities. He was bruised for our he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. You know what iniquities is? Sin, lawlessness. Lawlessness is rampant. What happened today in, in Kansas City is lawlessness that's, e that's going to get worse. What we saw happen in a couple of three years ago, lawlessness. It's going to get worse. He says, he was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was placed on him. He was punished for our peace. Jesus never said, you deserve to be happy. He said, what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and he loses his soul? He loses his soul. What will a man exchange for his soul to be happy? God wants us to be happy, but not at any cost. Look at Adam and Eve. God put them in the, put them in the butt and smack them in the middle of the quarrel. They didn't even have to wear clothes. God said, you can have every bit of this. Every bit of this, okay? Don't touch the tree. Don't, t don't touch that tree. Don't, don't touch that. You can have all of this. Don't, don't touch that. God's goals are higher, broader, and more lasting than fleeting happiness. Did you hear me? God's goals and purposes for your life are higher, broader, and more lasting than fleeting happiness. Actually, the pursuit of happiness is not a theme of the New Testament. Instead, we find repeated times and commands to deny yourself. Deny yourself. Matthew 8, deny yourself. Luke 9, take up your cross. Romans chapter 6, consider oneself dead. He says, he says, God's path to happiness goes a different direction from the path we would normally naturally choose in the culture that we're living in. You want to be happy? Deny yourself. Deny everything that you want to do and you want to be. Take up your cross. Take it up. Let's go. Consider yourself dead. Sin says, 
If you do this, you'll be happy. It is a lie from the pit of hell. Sin will take you and lead you or no, stay there longer than you ever dreamed. And it'll keep you longer than you ever dreamed. Denying yourself. That means I choose God. God, what is your path? Delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the very desires of your heart. Delight in God. I delight to do your will, Jesus said. It is my pleasure, it is my pleasure to do your will. Psalms, Psalm verse 1, how happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in a pathway with sinners or sit in the company of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is. There is what is called a God-shaped vacuum in every one of our hearts with God. It is the only thing that's going to make you happy. God put a spirit, his spirit inside of you. And if you don't fill yourself up with his spirit, you will never be happy. You'll never find purpose. If you stay on a fence, let's just have to see how far I can stay here without going all the way over here. Straddle the fence, in and out, up and down. This week, maybe next week. This week, woo! Next week, uh. she said, "Be hot or be cold, and or else get out of the way. Get out of the way. Whoever wants to follow me, deny yourself. It's an invitation." He's not saying, "You, you, you, get up. Let's go follow me. Let's go follow me." He says, "No." Whoever denies himself, whoever wants to, come and follow me. It's a choice. Because life is filled with every day. The Bible says that hell enlarges itself every day. Because God never sends anybody to hell. You make the decision to say, I deny God. I'm going to do my own thing. Believe in yourself. Jesus said, believe in yourself. I've got talents. I've got gifts. Matter of fact, I am good. I am so good. Now, that ain't, that ain't to say, put yourself down. That ain't to say, not to have any self-confidence. That is not, not anything like that. But the world says, believe in yourself. Jesus never said that. He said, you believe in me. Believe in me. I am the way. I am the truth. I, and no one, no one gets to the Father. No one. Stand there. Nobody gets to the Father. You got to come through Jesus. And Jesus says, if you want to be my follower, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow me. God's back here, but you got to, if you want to get to him, you got to come through Jesus. Because he's the one who shed the blood. He's the one who was whipped beyond recognition. I could go longer in this. Here's another one. Live your truth. Live your truth. When Pontius Pilate, Jesus never said live your truth. Jesus never said live your truth. Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate questioned Jesus about the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. Here's what we know. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life. When you consider how much the devil hates us all and how he wants to steal, kill, and destroy every day, it's amazing to me that we don't see more tragedy and more destruction. But the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the great restrainer. You can't live your truth. You've got to live this truth. This is the truth. And you've got to study it. Who he is and what he says and to 
Consider your life dead. Consider your own life dead. Your wants dead. Your, your, your desires dead. Your desire has to line up with his desire. And if his desire and your desire is not on the same page, you're on the, you're on the wrong page. I can't do what I want to do. If I did what I want to do, I'd be in Hilton Head right now getting ready to get on the beach in the morning. Stay there all day. Eating hot dogs and hamburgers. Or maybe salads. I can't do what I want to do. You say, well, you, you know, you're a person, Junior Jacob, you're Junior, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the. Oh, my God, I'm just like you. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm one of the shyest persons you'll ever meet in your entire life. I know. People don't believe that. People who know me know that. It's the anointing that comes on me. It's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the glory of God that comes on me. So I have to step out of me and get into him. Why? Because there's people that need deliverance. And there's people that need what's inside of me for me to give them what's inside of me because of what God has put inside of me. And the same thing goes for you. Because you're not your own. You've been bought with a high price. You will glorify God with your body. With every fiber of your being. Be not conformed to this world. Don't be molded into their form. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may present your bodies as a living. Holy and acceptable unto God. Which is your. It's the least that you can do. It's not reasonable. It's the least that you can do. It's to present your body as a living, yes. not a dead sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Building this building, people are selling us, what you doing that for? Go, why don't you go buy you, why don't you go buy you a, 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 buy you a condo on the beach? What do you want to build a building for? Because I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to disobey God. I didn't have any idea or pastor either that there's going to be a church here. Ain't nobody got time for no church. Right. <laughs> so God's going, to, uh, God's going to require something out of me more than he does you. Oh, I'm preaching good right now. Oh, I'm preaching good right now. It's not, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. That's your Pastor Judy and Pastor Jane. No, he requires the same obedience. And it may not look like mine, but it's going to look like yours. You're as quiet in this Presbyterian church. I love Presbyterians. It's true. It's true. Take up your cross. Deny it. Deny your wants. Deny your flesh. Deny your, your own thoughts, your own, this is what I believe. This is what, this is my stance. Give me a break. If your stance don't line up to this word of God, throw it out. Jesus went as far as to say, if your eye offends you, if your eye comes between me, Pluck it out. If your arm, cut it off. I'm screaming and spitting on Pastor Dave. That's how serious God is. It's better to go with one eye into heaven with two eyes to go to hell. Is that what the Bible says? Now that's in red. Now that's in red. It's better to go into heaven with one arm because you're going to get you another arm when you get to heaven than to go into hell with two arms. Cut it off. Plug it out. I'd rather 
rather go through this life all by myself than to think I'm hooked up with something or somebody that's going to bring me down. And it's going to come between my, me and my relationship with God. Any idea, anything, anything that's going to try and bring me down. Man, I ain't got time for me. I ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. I say it all the time. I ain't going to hell for nothing. I ain't going to hell when Jesus is here. Somebody else can teach on Wednesday night. Who wants to? Me either. I'm going on the first load. Anybody else? Me too. Take everything. Take this whole world. Give me Jesus. Take this whole world. Give me Jesus. Take everything. But give me Jesus. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want, I want more. I want more. Oh, I want more. It's all about you. It's not about me. It's all about you. It's all about me. Amen. Amen. I didn't finish. But we'll finish. We'll complete. If Jesus tarries. Amen. We're living in a world, y'all. And you don't know what you're going to look at when you get up in the morning and see the news. Stand up. You, you don't know. These are dangerous times. That's why Timothy called them perilous times. They're dangerous times. People are full of the devil. And the Bible says that the devil is, is so, is raging. He is so mad. He's raging. You know why? Because his time is short. He is so, such an angry elf. to take every one of you down. Every one of you. He wants to take you with him to total damnation, destruction. Every one of us. The thief cometh not but to steal to and destroy. That's all he does. How is that going to happen, Pastor? Sister Judy, how is this applied to me tonight? You got to stay in total consecration to him being so sold out to God to his call upon your life to what he wants out of your life so sold out that the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face sing it Go strangely dim, strangely dim in the light, in the light of his glory. And sing it again. Say to Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for your...
goodness, for your word. We declare not one word falls to the ground tonight. Thank you for the sobriety of your word tonight, that it hits us, it cuts us, it challenges us. Lord, I pray that as we go home tonight, that, Lord, you would speak to our hearts. Give us dreams and visions in the night, and day dreams and night dreams, and day visions and night visions. Revelations, Lord, that you would speak to us. Help us to meditate upon your word, memorizing your word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Help us to be committed, committed to the call, committed to, the, to Jesus. Help us to whoever would want to come and follow after you. Help us to deny ourselves. It's an invitation. Lord, I receive that invitation tonight. And pick up our cross and follow you. So, Lord, bless us tonight as we go. Put your angels around us tonight. Bring us back together Sunday morning if you should tarry. Let this rest of this week be a glorious week. Do something amazing. Do a miracle this week, Lord. That Something we've been praying for. Something we've been believing for. Something we've been contending for. Let it happen this week, God. We give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you. I love you so much. Thank you for coming tonight. We bless you in Jesus' name.